So the bracelet we're gonna start with is the all the way down bracelet from Monday's video. And this one is done exactly by the colors on the pattern. I'm trying to step out and do different colors. So I have added thread, just like I showed you how to do on Monday, and my thread is exiting out of one of the end beads that are sticking up. I'm going to pick up one Delica, and I'm going to pass back through that same Delica that I'm coming out of so that it makes a circle. And you'll see it puts my new bead there. So I'm going to go through again just to reinforce it. And then I'm going to pass down through the next lower bead and upper bead to get into position. Again, it doesn't matter the color of my delicas because they're going to be covered up in that clasp. So I pick up another one, come back through that same bead again to make a circle. Come back through the bead. Reinforce this. And then go through the lower bead and then the upper bead. And I'm going to do this twice more so that I have four beads here along the top edge. Once you have that, you can either be finished with it or we can do like we did in last week's project where we picked up a Delica and we went through the next Delica all the way down just to give us a little bit of extra sturdiness. This is not something that you have to do, okay? This is just something if you want to, you can completely do, but this gives us a little bit more sturdiness here on the end, and then I'm going to stitch through it and get rid of this thread. Once that thread is finished off, you can take a 10 millimeter slide tube. This is a Delica slide clasp, it's thinner, than the one I used in last week's video because it's specifically made for Delicas. And I give you the product code on the free pattern that's available on my website. But we're just going to start sliding this down our little row. And you see there, it is a perfect fit. So the thing with these, they're a little bit harder as far as getting them closed. The bead alone one is made out of a little bit of a softer metal, so it makes it a little bit easier to kind of get this closed, but on this, or on that one, but on this one, you kind of have to bend it down each side just a smidge so that you can actually get these pressed in to be how you need it. So you can see there how that is. I've got one here done on this side where I pressed it a little bit more. And then it's just a matter of taking your tools. I'm using an oval jump ring. You can use a split ring or whatever you want to attach your clasp to each end. So I thread that on. I'm gonna thread my clasp, What again, whatever you want. Close this, make sure it's closed. There we go. And then you have your finished end on the bracelet. So next, I'm gonna show you how to attach a slide bar clasp to the end of your bracelet. So this bracelet here has 11 of my Delica beads. And what I wanna do is I want to extend the brown out just a little bit so that the beadwork will wrap around this bar and connect to make an infinity where you cannot tell where you started and where you stopped on the clasp. This is a really, really, really great way to finish off the bracelet. So I have added new thread. I'm coming out here at the very end bead. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work down this row, threading on one Delica and passing through the next Delica sticking up. I'm gonna work this all the way down until I reach the last bead. Now, instead of working right back 
and making the same width here, what I need to do is now I need to come out of this bead right here and I need to be coming this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little bit of a turnaround. So I'm just going to come through two beads here at a diagonal. And then back through. And then through the two beads here so that you can see there where I am exiting. Now I'm going to work down the row, threading on a delica, and going through the next delica. When I get to my last bead that's sticking up there, now I'm going to work back in the other direction. I'm just going to flip this just because it's easier for me to work with. So you can see there how we're leaving off one row here on this end and we'll be leaving off one row on this end. This is just going to help it fit better in our 26.5 millimeter slide bar. So when you get to one end, this end right here, this is always where I'm going to do my odd count turnaround. Now, when I do the odd count turnaround, what we have to make sure is that you choose one of those four methods to do the odd count. It's kind of hard to do the traveling tail method with this version because you have no tail to travel with it. So if you do that version, you're gonna have to add an extra thread. I say just pick one of the other three versions so I'm just going to do the looping thread method just because it's, for me, it's going to be just this small little area here that I'm going to be um, doing this in. So I don't have to worry too much about my tight tension. But you can do the figure eight, you can do the square stitch, you can do whatever you want. But you can see there where I looped around and now I'm coming back out of that same thread. So now I'm going to continue just working back and forth till I have about seven beads along each edge. So right now I'm going to count this as one and two. So I have two beads along each edge and I'm going to try to do it till I have about seven. So once you have about seven beads along each edge, then you are ready to put on the clasp. So the first thing you want to make sure you do anytime you put on a stitched clasp like this is to do it with the clasp closed and connected together. This way you don't get these flipped in any way as you're trying to do it. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go through my little loop here and pull the beadwork through that loop. So now that I know I'm not gonna get this twisted, I can actually go ahead and open that up and be done with it. All right, so looking at my work, <clears throat> right now I'm exiting right here. I wanna come to this row, this first row here, this one right here, and I'm going to be connecting these rows together here. So this is exactly the same row as I have up here, this one, two, three, four, five. And we want to connect it to a four bead row, a one, two, three, four. So my thread right now is coming out of the end bead here. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through that first bead of that four bead row. Now for me, I'm gonna leave this very loose so you can kind of see the thread path that I'm going. Then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come through the next bead sticking up. And then through the next one here in that row. Then the next bead sticking up in this row. Then the next bead. This one. This one. The last one. 
And once I've pulled through that last one and I pull the thread tightly, I'm not going to pull it super tight because I don't want to mess up my beginning row right here. I want to leave it kind of, there we go. Okay. And you can see what is going on right here. I think that's just a, a loose thread. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the needle, and you can see right here, these two beads are not connected. So, I'm going to come through this bead to connect those edges. I'm just going to reinforce that one more time. Okay, and now, you cannot tell a lot, really, where I started and where I stopped. The only reason I can is because I can, um, you know, I just, I know uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right across just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to work back across and I'm going to zigzag through these beads to reinforce this connection. So once I've gone all the way across and I'm coming out of that last bead of the row, what I want to do is I want to take it and I want to connect it to the edge bead here so that now all of those beads are connected. And once that is done, then I am ready to stitch the thread through and get rid of this tail thread. So once you have the one side complete, then you're ready to go and do the other side so that now you have a really nice finished bracelet. So let's talk about our third bracelet here. I already have one side already done, so you can kind of see what we're gonna be doing. When we finish, we have a straight edge here, but we're gonna take and we are going to decrease our rows until we only have one bead left here on the end. So I'm going to start a new thread on the end. And when I start that new thread, I want to be coming out of either this bead or this bead pointing towards the center. So the first thing that we have to look at on this bracelet, this is the tester bracelet for the pattern. And when I did the pattern, I wasn't sure what kind of clasp I was gonna use. So I noticed here I just started my turquoise here and did not start it actually on the pattern going all the way this way. So I'm missing one, two, three turquoise beads. So I'm just going to have to improvise. This was going to be mine anyways, but <clears throat> what I'm mainly going to show you is your decrease techniques. So when you do your decrease techniques, if you're doing something with a pattern like this, you really have to continue on with the pattern or end at a certain spot with a solid color and finish out your pieces. So you can see here how I have um, decreased and still kept up with the pattern that I had going. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work a row down to here doing my normal uh, pattern. So I'm going to just start working across. Just paying attention to where my pattern is. And I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna double check here. I think my next bead has to be turquoise. One, two, three, yep, turquoise. Okay, so it's gonna be like that. And I think what I'm going to do because of that, I think I'm just going to finish out this side with orange and I'm not going to worry about trying to start another one of these little diamonds. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to work back this way, but I need to be coming out of this bead right here to do so. So I'm going to do that little turnaround. Now, if I was making this and, you know, I, it really, really bothered me that at the beginning I had this mistake here. 
then what I would do if I were you is I would cut a little thread right here on the end and I would start pulling out some rows until you get to where like right here I would stop with this row and then I would start a new thread and then just re peyote the rows but that's going to be completely up to you. So now I'm going to work, and when I get to the end of the row, I'm going to be stopping here. So I'm going to continue on, and you can see here I had one bead, one bead, and now one bead. Just working down. So the last bead on this row is going to be the brown. Okay, so now I have that, but this time what I need to do is I need to be coming out here. So again, I'm going to do a little bit of a turnaround. And it's one of those things, it does not matter how you get there as long as you get there without showing any thread along the outside of the beads. <laughs> And when I started stitching this one, I thought, oh my gosh, how garish. That's why I called it the 70s called, because I wanted to call it the 70s called and wanted their carpet back or wanted their bracelet back. But I really did fall in love with these colors. When you see this in person, it's just so pretty. It's such a fun one. Okay, so I'm coming out here. So now I'm going to work the row here. So I'll put on an orange turquoise so as you can see what I'm doing each time I finish out a row I am just decreasing that row by a bead on each end until we are down to one single bead so you can see there now what that's looking like. So now I want to come out of this bead and I want to be going that direction. So I'm going to do that turnaround. Okay, so I'm going to keep going down the row. And on this row, I only have three beads. So I'm going to do that turnaround because I need to be coming out right here. Okay, so now I'm going to work one bead and two beads. And then I'm going to do that turnaround so that I'm coming out here and I can add the last bead in the decrease. So each row that you do decreases again by one bead on each end and it just finishes so nice and symmetrically. So now I'm gonna put that last bead in there so that now you can see what that looks like. So here was this end and here was this end. So now what you're gonna need are a few 15s or you can use a wire protector or whatever you want, but we're gonna need that and the clasp and I need to be coming out of this top bead. So once I'm coming out of the last bead here, the easiest thing to do is to pick up Let's see, I think I'll do six 15s. Two, three, four, five. Oh shoot, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up six 15s and I'm gonna pick up the first part of my clasp. And I'm gonna come back through that same bead I'm coming out of to make a circle. Now, 
You can use a wire protector here. You can use more beads if you want to. You can do whatever. I'm just trying to show you a really, really simple way to finish off the bracelet. So what I'll do at this point is I will go through and I will reinforce this as many times as I can get through that, those beads. And then I will finish off this thread and do the same thing on the other side. So once you finish the other side of that clasp, you can see what that is going to look like. And you can see how nice and tapered those ends are and how all the different options you have of finishing off your pieces. There's a lot of really easy ways that I hope that each of you will give a try when you finish off your piece. So friends, I hope you enjoyed learning how to finish off your peyote bracelets in some different ways from our even count video that I did two weeks ago. Now the patterns for all three bracelets are available on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com as well as bead packs for each of the projects for a limited time. We went over even count peyote, now we've done odd count peyote, and coming up next in the series is going to be our two and three drop peyote, and we're going to discuss how you can go all the way up to a 12 drop peyote, which is just crazy to me, but uh, that is going to be the next video in the series. So, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye!